All right. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so I'm sure you're all familiar with the operators in Python. Not all of them are as interesting as some of the others, but the most interesting one of all is the smallest. So hello, I'm Peter, and I'll be diving into the depths of the dot operator. Uh, now, as you know, Python has a giant standard library where the dot is sort of the path separator. Uh, so you have some parent uh, module, and you get some child out of it. Now, this is a different use of the dot than I'll be speaking about, but it, uh, it's a case where the dot does some kind of names, namespacing. So what I will be talking about is uh, attribute access. So the three things you can do with the dot is set an attribute on an object, get an attribute out of an object, and delete the attribute. The syntax I hope you all know. Uh, now these are some of the most optimized operations in Python, so it's very good to use them. Uh, but you always know, have to know the name of, of the attribute you're getting. If you don't know it, you can use the built-in functions set adder, get adder, and del adder, which actually do the exact same thing, just a bit slower. Now, to uh, understand what the dot does, we'll introduce this very simple approximation of what an object is in Python. So if you have an object, it has a type, which uh, doesn't change very often and it defines the behavior of the object. And then you have the dict, which contains all the da data specific to that one instance, and that's expected to change quite a lot. Of course, there are always exceptions, but we'll go with this simple model. Now, as an example, uh, I have some class square. I define a method on it that gets put in the type. And then when I define an attribute on an instance of that object, the attribute goes in the dict. And the dict is under the hood just a simple dictionary. Uh, in Python 3, it's more than a simple dictionary, but it acts like one. Uh, and uh, then when I want to get the attribute out, I just use the dot again, and Python looks in the dict. And if it doesn't find the attribute in the dict, then it looks on the type, so I can also get the get area method, which is not, not in the instance dict. So here are the simple rules. When you set an attribute, it goes directly to the dict. When you get the attribute, you try in the dict, then you try the type, and if it's not there, then uh, fail. And most of this talk will be about uh, how to make this work somehow differently. So the first uh, thing you can do to override this behavior is uh, to put a special getAtter method on the type. What this does is it hooks into step three here, and instead of failing right away, uh, this function get called, gets called, and whatever it returns gets returned as the value of the attribute. So this simple class just proxies all attribute access to some other object. This works, it has some limitations. For example, it won't, uh, uh, it won't uh, work on attributes that are already in the dict. So you, if you ask for underscore ob object here, which is already set there, the get adder won't be called. Now there's another method you can do, which is get attribute. It has a longer name, uh, and it's more powerful. This one uh, actually takes over the whole attribute getting process. So uh, it's a bit more difficult to use because if there's any attribute you already have on the object, you have to uh, make a special case for it. Otherwise, you can do anything you want in this function and yeah, it'll work. Uh, now. That's getting attributes. There's one more thing you want to do, and that's setting them. And for that, uh, we can have a set adder method. So what this class will do is it keeps a dictionary. When you try to get an attribute from the object, it looks in the dictionary and returns whatever it finds. And if you want to set an attribute, uh, it uh, 
also looks in the dictionary and uh, well, it sets the attribute on the dictionary. As you can see, I'm special casing the dict because I'm setting the dict here and I don't want to set the dict that's, you know, use the dict that's not set already. Uh, we also have the delatter, which does uh, deleting attributes, so it's, it's the same. Did you have time to read it? I guess most of you are looking at me, so, uh, yeah. Uh, the question is, uh, do any of these hooks run during init? Uh, they run every time you set an attribute in Python. So if the init has attribute setting, then yeah. Init is just a function that gets called on the beginning. It's, there's nothing too special about init. So yeah, I have to special, special case this for the setting here in the init. Now, if you ever uh, find yourself writing something like this, think twice, because uh, the attribute namespace is not entirely under your control. Uh, you have attributes like under anything. You'll inevitably want to add some methods to your class. You'll want to enable subclasses to add new attributes. So Usually, when you have something like a dictionary, stick to a dictionary interface and don't mess around with attributes. Otherwise, you'll run into trouble pretty fast. Uh, yeah, so uh, I haven't seen this many times, actually, because this sort of blanket uh, overriding of getting and setting attributes is not that useful. Uh, usually what you want to do is you have one attribute that needs some kind of special treatment. Or you have several, but each one is special in its own way. So if you did the get adder, you would have a nasty tree of ifs, and it's, it's not very nice. So for this, Python has a very special feature called descriptors. Now what descriptors do is you put a special object in the type, which will control access to the specified attribute. So if I have some kind of square and I want it to have an area, I put some kind of magic special object uh, into the class, and when I set the side, the, and then I look at the area attribute, uh, this descriptor will take the side, the, this five here, square it, and give, it the, give that back. This is pretty easy to implement. The descriptor object only needs one method, which is get. So double underscores get. Uh, what this method gets is the instance. So that would be the square here. And if the instance is set, it can return the value of the attribute. If the instance is not set, that means we're getting uh, the attribute from the class itself. So that's the usage on the bottom here. And what most well-behaved descriptors do is return the descriptor itself, so you can use it for some other reasons. Uh, sorry. Okay, is that clear? You just have a special object to control access to an attribute. Now, what this object can also do is control setting. So if you uh, use a method called set, uh, it gets the instance and the value the user is trying to set, and it's free to do anything at once. In my case, uh, we want to update the side because the user set an area to something, so we can uh, update the side to match. Is anybody having trouble reading that? I guess not, okay. Uh, and the last thing there is, is delete. Uh, the short del was already taken, so it's longer. This one isn't that useful because you don't find yourself deleting attributes all that often, but for completeness, it's there. Now, a bit of terminology. Uh, when a descriptor has the set method, it's called a data descriptor. If it does not, it's called a non-data descriptor. Uh, this is uh, the the set means that uh, pretty much you want to control all access to the attribute. If you only have get, you're just you're just getting that out. If you have set, 
means there's some data you presumably want to store in that attribute. So that's why it's called uh, the data descriptor. Now, uh, how many of you know the property decorator? Almost everyone. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, I've pretty much uh, gone the long way to do something like the property decorator. And in fact, uh, the property decorator, all it does is create a descriptor. You can actually implement property in pure Python as a descriptor. You, know, you just give it three functions and call them in the appropriate special methods. So I have an example here. So I have a set area, get area, del area, give these three functions to the property and put that in area. You can actually call the built-in property like this and it, it'll do the right thing. If you add some more sugar to this class, then you can really re-implement all of the mechanics of the property. And again, this has set, so it's a data descriptor. Okay. I'm on time. Yeah, uh, so uh, Python actually likes descriptors very much. And anytime there's something special to do on attribute access, you have a descriptor. For example, uh, if you look at a simple function, uh, if you look at the attributes it has, one of them is get, because functions themselves are descriptors. When you have a function on a class, then and then you have an instance of the class, so you want to get the function, you don't get the function back, you get a method. You get an object that has the function itself and the self-argument baked in. Right, so uh, here's a very simple class with a very simple function, and uh, when you get the when you get the attribute from uh, an instance of that class, you get a bound method. If you call that, it automatically provides the self argument. And if you get a line from the class it gives you the original decorator, uh, or the original function. As I said, most well-behaved descriptors return themselves when you get them from a class. In Python 2, you would get something called uh, an unbound method, which doesn't really do anything that useful, but it's there. Now they, they sort of fixed it, so it just gets the, the function back. Now, if if you look closely to the first descriptor we had, it, yeah, it works pretty much the same way. It does something special when you get the thing from the instance. When you get it from uh, the class, it returns the descriptor itself. Right. Uh, another thing I want to talk about uh, is this little trick for saving memory. If I had a point class and I had millions of these objects around, I wouldn't want uh, each of them to have this dict attribute, which, as I said, is a normal dict, so it takes up memory. And I know that in a point, I'll only ever have an x number and a y number and nothing else. So what this special magic incantation will do is it will actually make the type not have a dict attribute. It'll have the type and it'll have directly the X and Y in the C object itself. So there will be no dictionary and it'll save the memory. Uh, you can of course set and get the X and Y attributes, but you cannot set anything else because there's no space in the object for anything extra. Right? And if you try to get X from the class, you get this descriptor. So every, every time there's some special attribute, Python implements it with a descriptor, right? And uh, I think now is the time to give you the whole magic formula. So this is the way uh, an attribute is gotten from an instance. First, you try get attribute. If there is get attribute, uh, you just call it and get it back. If it, make, if it throws an error, you know, the error is raised. If there's no get attribute, you look up uh, 
the attribute on the class, and if it is a data descriptor, then you call its get method and return that. Only after that, only after looking for the data descriptor, uh, the dict is checked, so the value is gotten directly from, from the instance attributes. Uh, this doesn't call any descriptors, you just get the value straight back. After that, you check the non-data descriptor, well, or you check if the descriptor is non-data, if that's the case, then you call that. If it's not a descriptor at all, if it doesn't have the tender get method, then you just return it directly. So if on the class I have some value, like uh, you know, an, a class attribute, a constant, for example, it's just returned directly. After that, you fall back to get adder, and if that is also not there, then attribute error is raised. Now there are there is this weird thing about the data descriptor and non-data descriptor being in two different places. What this allows is if you have a data descriptor, it pretty much controls all the access to the attribute. Uh, so uh, what the Python designers thought is that if you define both get and set, then you probably want to uh, control the access to that attribute yourself. Right? If you don't define the set, then you're free to override that attribute in the instance. So you can put something in the dict, and uh, then, uh, since it's not a data descriptor, you will get get it back from the dict before the descriptor is checked. Right? Uh, there's a one nice use of it uh, in the pyramid framework. It's called Rayfi. Some other frameworks call it cached property. I've called I've heard it called lazy property. Uh, what this does is uh, you give it a function. And then when you get the corresponding attribute, uh, the function is called, and then uh, the attribute set with the value uh, you've computed. So it calls the function, puts the result in the, uh, in the dict, and whenever you get the attribute again, it doesn't call the function again. It doesn't go to the descriptor. It just returns the cached value from the dict. So this is a way uh, if you, yeah, if you want to implement lazy property. There's some discussion about adding this to the standard library, and uh, yeah, so maybe we'll see it under some name. Is there anyone who doesn't understand? <coughs> Excuse me. If you want to invalidate this, you just remove it from the dict. Yeah, you just delete the attribute. Yeah, it, the magic is that you can just set the attribute normally. You know, if if you would know the name in advance, this would literally be instance dot name equals value. You now the setting is not affected at all with with uh, this descriptor. So. If you want to change the value in the dict, you just do it uh, normally. The only thing that's different is getting, and that's only when it's not already in the dict. Other questions on this? Yeah. So, um, regards to this, wait, do you need a mic? Yeah, um, actually, are you finished? I'm not finished. Oh, you have a question around later on. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have a general question, then then just wait. Okay, uh, so another thing about this magic formula is this on class, which I put in italics, because it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, because looking up something on the class of instance is not an actual attribute access. It's a bit different. Uh, and it has to do with something called the method resolution order. So if you have a class and you have a subclass of it, you can uh, check for the method resolution order and it gives you the child, the parent, and the object. Now when you look something up in the class, 
it goes through the classes in this order. So the attribute would be defined on child. It would uh, be returned from the child. If it's not on the child, Python looks in parent. If it's not there, Python looks in the universal superclass. Now, if you have some kind of weird uh, hierarchy of classes with multiple inheritance and stuff like that, there's an algorithm called, I think, C2, uh, which you can look up, There's which uh, converts this hierarchy to just a uh, list that's checked uh, linearly. Uh, one more thing about this MRO. Uh, it's actually an attribute defined on the meta class. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, it's defined on on the uh, on the type meta class. And if you have an instance of the object, it doesn't show up because uh, if you have an instance, you only check the instance itself and its class, it's not its meta class. So this is maybe a useful way to hide things from instances if you need them on the type. You just put it in the metal class. And if you don't know what meta classes are, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time to explain it. Hey, that's it. Uh, time for questions. Okay, uh, for, thanks to Peter, and we have uh, almost eight minutes for questions. So please raise your hand, and I will come with the microphone. Hi, thank you very much for the insights. It's really, really interesting. And um, one thing I actually saw, um, which was quite, um, quite interesting, was the slots, mm -hmm. uh, the slots attribute. How would you compare this to um, name tuple? And what are the adva I understand what the advantages are compared to, to name tuple, but then why do we need name tuple? Uh, name tuple is actually used a bit differently. The name tuple uh, is immutable. That's the first thing. And the second thing, a name tuple has order in the attributes. So you can actually use it as a tuple. Here you don't, don't have order. So use whatever makes sense in your case. Right. If if I wanted to add, uh, for example, an iterator on this or make this an iterator, I couldn't really do that with name tuple since that's already an iterator. Uh, can I return uh, data descriptor, for example, like? From get attribute method. Excuse me. Can I return data descriptor from get attribute method? Uh, like, well, you can return it, but it is, won't. The ah. get method won't be called. You you can actually call the get method yourself. Yeah. That's that's not a problem, but it won't be called uh, if you just return it. Okay. Any any more questions? More questions? Yeah. Oh, there's one. Um, the, the, sorry, the side um, that you, you implemented there with the area descriptor um, could perhaps just as easily or possibly even cleanerly be implemented using straight properties in that it's, it's then inline in one spot and it's easy to find. What, what real-world examples do you have of where descriptors are actually useful in code that it, they add more than they, they take? I've, I've, had the, I've just seen them used before um, where um, effectively they could have been implemented in other ways, but now the descriptor class, because it was separate, it involved a lot more jumping around the code to try and follow the logic uh, of what was going yeah. on. Yeah, uh, if you just have a simple case like I have here, uh, it is better to use property if you can. Uh, one thing I took from this slide, uh, from the talk because of time reasons, is actually examples of more complex descriptors. Uh, 
if you have an ORM, like say SQL Alchemy that uses descriptors a lot, and it's because uh, the descriptor is a class in itself. So it can have other behavior than just getting and setting or just controlling attribute access. For example, in SQL Alchemy, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, do operations with the descriptor, which is a, a column on the database, and it will generate SQL statements, right? And if, well, if you use it on the class, it generates the SQL statements. If you use it on its instance, it gets the data of that column, right? So there are, uh, yeah, in simple cases, it's better just to use property, which is also a descriptor, but it's just a simple one. In complex, when you need some more state or functionality built into the descriptor, then use a class and you can, when you have several diff several related uh, attributes like that, you can just create a descriptor class and reuse it. But yeah, I, I agree that the code is not uh, as readable as it could be when you use descriptors because there's one more place you have to check. But it's magic. Use it wisely. <laughs> and I think this was the perfect conclusion for this talk. Thanks again, Peter.